So not only do you dislike Asians, but you no. dislike your own brother. <laughs> You're hating on the blacks. Oh, <laughs> shit. Well, you know what? At, at, least, at, least you're, at least you're spreading the hate. You just don't keep hey, it. Don't steal it. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back to the Blunt Lad. I am Al, joined by my brothers Marcus, Rick, and Matt. What's going on, fellas? Chilling like a villain. What's poppin'? What's poppin'? What's poppin'? Happy Sunday, fun day, fellas. Love, love. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, we're gonna jump right into it. I'm gonna start this off with a little incident involving my wife and I and our first Karen. Uh oh. So I don't have an actual recording. I just have a picture of this fuck face because I want folks to know this motherfucker right here. But, uh, you know, my wife and I were working. We were making a delivery. I won't say for what company. As, I, as I'm getting out of the car, I hear somebody yelling from across the street. Can I help you? But, you know, anyone that knows me knows it. I'm always ready for a confrontation. So I was like, can you? And he was like, well, you're in my fucking driveway. Well, I, well, I got a fucking delivery for you. And he was like, oh, you got a fucking attitude. I said, no, you have a fucking attitude. Look. So how about you just shut the fuck up and let me do my job? Then he proceeds to say, suck my dick while he grabs like nothing in his crotch. Because I'm pretty sure no. he was. Ain't nothing here. <laughs> so I was like, I bet you'd like that, you little faggot. Yeah. Keep it moving. So he proceeds to stand in front of my vehicle, as you can see. This man's name is Joe. So before I told him I was going to make him YouTube famous, he was like, yeah, brother, while he's pointing his finger down. Like, I know you want to say niggas. Just be a man and say it. But as I was telling him to his face and his punk boy who was standing next to him, like, he was like, yeah, you're in my driver. That's his buddy, Mike, over there. Right. They're both wearing American Legion jackets. Now, Mike didn't have much to say. He just found everything in the training. I mean, as I proceeded to call this dude a cocksucking dumbass, as you can see, he's on his phone. He was calling the cops. He was telling the cops that I was harassing him, that I was refusing to leave his property. Mind you, that dumbass is standing in front of my motherfucking car. Now, any other day, if I wasn't working and somebody wanted to stand in front of my car, it's not going to end well for you. Let's just say that. You're going to get fucked up. <laughs> yeah. So thankfully, thankfully, I was on the clock. So Joe, seeing that I was trying to record his ass, kept his mouth fucking shut, took the fact that I was calling him a bitch. I mean, of course, he wasn't going to do nothing because most of those racist Italians are punk-ass bitches. And they're bitches anyway. It's, it's Every awful. last... Every last one of them are punk ass bitches. Like I'm in, I, I told him, I said, yeah, dude, I'm in your driveway. What are you going to do about it? I said, let me tell you what you're going to do about it. Absolutely nothing. I said, you know why? Because you're a fucking bitch. And when he, was on the, when he was on the phone with the cops, he was like, yeah, this is Joe. And he said his last name. I said, no, nah, don't lie to him, bro. Tell him you're a cock sucker. Oh. <laughs> your name is cock sucker. Your name ain't Joe. You're cock sucker. And he's telling the cop, oh, I don't know who this guy is. I said, you know exactly who I am. I'm your fucking daddy, bitch. And Damn. his buddy Mike, his, his buddy Mike found that hilarious, bro. Did his he laugh? Mike Please tell me. Oh, laugh. he, he laughed his ass off, dude. Oh, he wasn't cool. trying to help his boy because he knew his boy was about to get his fucking ass whooped in front of his own motherfucking house. Again, lucky I was on the clock. But if you happen to be door dashing, FedExing, UPSing, whatever it is, and you're delivering in the Monroe Township area, look out for this Joe motherfucker right here because he doesn't like cup. Oh, I shouldn't say colored folks because it's terrible too. And the first couple he doesn't people. like <laughs> he doesn't like black folks. He doesn't like Asian folks. Now, thankfully, he didn't say anything disrespectful to my wife because I wouldn't want to jail. Yeah. So fortunately oh, yeah. for him, you know, I was looking for a job. Time. I got this one. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He knew what time it was. He knew exactly what time it was. So yeah, look out for punk ass Joe. 
in the Monroe Township area in New Jersey. That fucking punk ass little bitch. <laughs> now, moving on. I hope he sees this too. <laughs> Uh, this next video, because you know Diddy's in the, in the news a lot, I just wanted Not to. Uh, I found Ooh. I found I found this little gem, and I'm like, you know, Diddy will just test anybody, because this motherfucker that he tests right here, I wouldn't test this nigga. You know what I'm saying? Look at this. It truly oh, is yeah. about the Benjamin, as we see. Oh yeah, he's glittering. He's glittering. Well, now when we come back, we're gonna talk more with Puffy, and if you want to hang out, more than welcome. Stick around, my brother. Oh, all right, look, look. we'll be right back with more. Hey, who's the host of that show? Was that Keenan Ivory Williams? That was Keenan. That was yeah. Keenan. I forgot he had a talk show. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, that was like yeah. late 90s, wasn't it? Yeah, well, you could take me young Mike is. I mean, hey, Diddy wouldn't be a predator if he didn't try it, though, so he's a legit predator, bro. I mean, I wish Mike would have put him in his place right there and there. We I talked wish about... Mike would have knocked him the fuck out. Mm -hmm. We, we talked about... Stopped. Uh, stuff like uh, witchcraft, santeria, and voodoo, and different things. Um, I I'm starting to get this vibe about Diddy that, you know, we jokingly say all the time, like when they get switched out. Like, take um, take Jamie Foxx, for an example. I think for a long time, you know, Jamie Foxx was on to Puffy. And there's actually some interviews where he said some shit. And then we all know, oh, yeah. like, Jamie changed. We don't know what happened with Jamie, so we're probably on 2.0, right? Or whatever. That said... Well, yeah, Jamie changed after that sickness. I he think, came out looking all white. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. and, I, and I'm thinking something along those lines with Diddy, but way back in the day, either he's like possessed or he's part of the devil, so to speak, or just like the same way that some really, you know, powerful preachers are connected to God. I think he's connected to that that devil of that they speak of in Hollywood and the record industry. And that's just the thing. You, and you, you sell your soul. That sort of seems to be what happens. I'll speak to the, one of the other devils in, in, in uh, Hollywood or in the industry, and that's Jay-Z. Yeah, Jay-Z yeah. is known to be the oldest demon in Hollywood. Yep. And Beyonce. Oh. The oldest. One of the oldest. Beyonce is one of those, uh, what do I call her? She's just a witch trying to find a coven. Have you, you seen the video of her like on stage that was supposedly taken by somebody in the crowd and when she's like whipping her hair and her face kind of turns into like this demon look? You ever seen that video? Yeah, that's an ugly look. Mm -hmm. My wife yeah. and I think it's a little uh it's a bit altered, but could be. Not too far not too far fetched. Not a lot of the experts, a lot of the experts are saying that that particular angled one from the lady in the audience. There's been multiple, I guess, multiple like diagnostic type, forensic type people, analysts have said that that there's a probably 99% chance that that was not altered from everything they can tell. Oh, Whoa. and all they do in their concerts are rituals. From yeah, her, that's her yeah. rituals. Uh, Rihanna, like, dude, before LeBron walks into the basketball court, that hand ritual, I won't repeat it, but that's but, satanic shit. James, satanic ritual. Oh yeah, Taylor too. Ta a lot of them. Yeah, unfor unfortunately. And dude, I was at a Kendrick Lamar concert. I think I mentioned this before. That was a ritual. I say it because, you know, I know. Fucking Trav. Trav take Trav is making portals. Also, where's Kendrick? Where's that shit around his head? Like, constantly. Oh, oh yeah. That, oh, what's that, that, what's that on the, uh, the weekend? Yeah, well, he's one? definitely, he doesn't even deny it. Look, it was so stupid. I liked a lot of these cats, and then you come Me to find out. Who you tell them, dude? Who yeah. you tell us? Me, That's me that red pill thing I always talk about, guys. Like, it makes it really hard to, like, listen to certain artists and watch certain movies. It, it, once you are, like, red-pilled, as I always say, because it's just a, it's just like how the Matrix describes. Once you kind of know there's no more ignorance is bullshit. Like, you'll watch these certain people and these particular artists, and you'll be like, Man, it's been there this whole time and I didn't realize. It's kind of like Dice said about the Nickelodeon shit last week where she was like, you know, at the time I didn't really really look at this as sexual. But now watching it right now, it clearly was. You know what I mean? So uh -huh. once you get once you get fucking red pilled, man. I like dude, like we're gonna move on to the next duty video. Because this video cause I, I I told folks Diddy groomed Usher. Usher groomed Beaver. Oh, yeah. In this video, you're gonna see the game in this video. In the background, 
he's got his hands all over Justin. There's really nothing you really think it's a birthday party for Justin. You know this nigga's not 21, man. He looks very scared. Yeah, that shit is so he sad. Knows because, what's about to happen to him. Yeah, where is where's his team at? Where's where's his, that is his people team. that That's are supposed thing. to have his back? You, you know when I've talked to you guys about like these other other rappers like Six Nine, Lil Xan, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, I could go on forever on that part of it, but they're all controlled. They're puppets. Love, love. Like there's literally every time you see them in front of the camera, there's four big ass motherfuckers standing right there, basically gun to the head. They don't need the gun out, but it's gun to the head. Like they have, they, they, these are they're they're being pimped, and Justin. And look, was, you know they're focusing, they're they're focusing on uh, just a couple of these kids. But Jaguar Wright is another person that's been spilling the uh, beans. Uh, oh yeah, let's not forget the young kids in B two K. All yeah, yeah. You know, the things that things that they were forced to do. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's just a disgusting and terrible pattern. Fucking amen. In Hollywood and in the music industry. And it's like nobody's kid is safe. Yeah, Everyone I mean, asks, where are the parents? Well, the parents are responsible for these kids being in the presence of these fucking predators. Yeah. 100 fucking percent. Yeah, Diddy, and the crazy, Steen, yeah. those guys at Nickelodeon are the same. You were saying, Matt? The, the crazy thing about it is, is uh, and the sad part is a lot of times those parents don't care. They get in a check, so they're fine with it. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Exactly. I could never, like, like, look, I know we don't really openly say this on the show, but Matt is my son. Like, even when... He started going upwards in ranks when it came to like sports and basketball, et cetera. Like there's never a time that I could think of in his entire life that I would have allowed him to be subjected to that for any kind of money. And he could be mad at me. He, he'll, he'll tell you, I'll let you be fucking mad at me for a few years over some shit. Be mad at me that I didn't let you go on Nickelodeon. You know what I'm saying? And I say mm -hmm. that shit with tears in my motherfucking eyes right now. Fuck that. No way, not ever. Yeah. So to me, the only way that they allowed for that to happen, those parents are just as fucking guilty like drake's dad oh, you know what i mean just as yep, fucking yep. guilty you let it happen dog you let you grab that motherfucker and you go to canada you go to fucking mexico you think that shit's gonna give a fuck let him be mad let him be mad you know yeah fuck that. yeah i mean he thought he was doing right by his son which sucks because no, he was yeah. being weak you know, his to son. his son he was being weak he was being weak. I, I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. But I kind of see where he was coming from. Where you know, well, of course, we can all understand. Your son's I in mean, a position to, you know, your son's bringing in the check. Yeah, you know, like, you don't want to crowd him. him. I'm sorry, brother. Like considering no, like ahead, ahead. the way the way that he felt about dude. Like I don't know, man. I feel like you can't. He you let can't his give into that. Yeah, you can't give into that kind of thing. It's like, bro, if you're that convicted about something. That's not for any, you know, it's not for nothing. Like, there's something to it. So, yeah, so, so, so so don't let him be alone with them. That's that's the exact expression that applies to the half the hell is is paid with good intentions. I don't give a mm. fuck. Well, it, it wouldn't happen. Yeah. I don't have children of my own, but I have godchildren, nieces, nephews, whom I love as my own. But, and I can tell you right now. As long as the law is not involved and something happens to a kid in my family, oh fuck, it's going to get resolved. Oh and yeah, I don't, need to say, I don't need to say much more than that, except for the fact that it's going to get handled, because the law doesn't give a fuck about you or your kid in situations like this. Nope. Because uh, look, no. that same dude that ruined Jake, uh, Drake, whatever, uh, Drake is his, is his name. Yeah, yeah Drake Peck. Bell. Peck is the, that last that the predator's last name. Peck. Uh, Disney Disney hired his ass yeah. to work around kids again. You know this dude just got out of jail. You know what he was in jail for. Allegedly. Allegedly. And you bring allegedly him around. Disney knew. Oh, they knew. Disney always knows. Disney always knows. And I mean, if that affects me being in Black Panther 3, you know, hey, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but Disney always knows. <laughs> Disney, Disney always knows. I mean, you can't say two words without Disney knowing if you're on their roster, bro. Of course. It doesn't matter where you at on that roster. You can't say two words without them uh, knowing. So the, then the, the, uh, the, the Kevin, you know, if you know who Kevin Smith is, he is uh, Silent Bob. 
and Jay and yep. Silent Bob, but he's uh-huh. also a mega writer producer for Clerks, Mall Rats, Chasing Amy, all of the Jay and Silent Bob re- related stuff, even some more serious stuff like Jersey Girl, etc. Um, he made a movie called Dogma, and in the uh-huh. movie Dogma, he very lightly but at the same time right down your throat describes disney to a t with this movie world and it's actually involved in every one of the movies like all of all of his writing uh from clerks all the way down the line uh involved movie world and it's basically Mm -hmm. it's mickey mouse you know what i mean and some of the ways that they describe all of that is insane like it's insane yeah and it's a good way to get to see that and justin's been telling you in his music for a long time, he's been telling you in his music. Nobody's been listening up until now, though. Uh-huh. Now everybody's nitpicking everything. Everybody's hearing. Uh-huh. He's been telling you for a long time. Like, hey, look, I was even guilty for hating on Justin when he was a teenager because I, you know, I didn't know what had happened to him, what uh-huh. had been happening to him, and knowing now, like, look, I'm the biggest Bieber fan there is. Let's fuck it up. The guys, you know, he's always been talented. I just thought he was a dumbass, but he was acting out because of what was happening to him. Of course. Exactly. And have you seen like, okay, Which you know that song, clear. Yummy? You know the song, Yummy? Yeah. It's, it's been kind of circulating that that's what that song is about. You've got that yummy, yummy, yummy. Like when you watch all of that stuff, he, he is trying to like, allegedly, he's trying to like sh- tell us all about pimping the kids out in Hollywood and in the music industry. Oh. That, and that, that's what that song is about. And as of recent, listen to that song, Lonely. But maybe that's the price you pay for the money and fame at an early age. Yeah, that one too. Yep. Oh, they've been using that one as the backdrop in those new videos mm-hmm. now. Where they're re-releasing mm-hmm. all the stuff that, you know, that happened with Diddy. And it's like, you can see how unfucking comfortable he is. Like, the you know, just showed the clip from the one with the game thing. But some of those ones, like when he was on that two-day retreat with Diddy, and him and Usher and Diddy were in the studio together, and you could see it in his fucking eyes. Like, you know when someone is hurt. He was uh, accepting uh, an award, and the lady handing him the award was like literally smelling his his face, hissing his neck, and he was like, "My God, I feel violated." <laughs> wow, I feel violated right now. Uh, and he was. There was a dude interviewing him, and I think he's from the UK. I can't remember his name. I just saw the clip again today. The guy's like, my God, Justin, you smell so good. He's like, how old are yeah. you? And Justin's like, 16, wow. about to be 17, but thank you. He's like, I don't remember ever smelling this good at your age. Can I say this? Lean into me again. You smell amazing. How old are you? Uh, Thank you. How old are you? I'm 16. I'll be 17 in like two weeks. I don't ever remember smelling that good at 16. Like I was, that was bad. Yeah. Wow, look at your eyes. Um, uh, what music are you listening to at the moment, Justin? Well, uh, I listen to a lot of different stuff. I'm really into Jessie J, actually. Ah, oh, well, she's here. We're going to get to see her later. Thank you so much. Look at him. Look at him. What a beautiful face. All right. Now it's time to find out who's nominated for International Breakthrough. Vote to just do it. Don't mess around. Don't tease me, Bieber. And like the way he's looking at him is like he wanted to eat this motherfucker right there. Wow. And yet it's in your face and nobody's doing a damn thing about it. But yeah, Justin's no. been telling you for years this has been happening. Now that I'm actually paying attention to him, he's been saying it for years. All of the uh-huh. people have been doing this to him. Like they're starting to show. I'm going to... I'm going to piggyback what a comedian said because I know he was trying to be funny but not funny. I think Usher's Confessions album is about P. Diddy. There you go. There you have it. How you doing? See, I what? thought it was about Chili. Is it, I, you know what I mean? Like, he's claimed over the years that it's actually about Chili from TLC. Yeah. That, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the song Just like he's not gay. The song Just like he's not gay. So. Like, you know, and he, he was already in this relationship and then you know, chili. Oh, yeah, I, I don't. Let me just say alleged because allegedly, of course, I don't want to get sued. You know, right? That's why I threw hey, that in there about Disney. <laughs> it's been said Usher has herpes and likes it in yeah, the butt. Yeah, they passed it. Yeah, and well, seeing know. seeing how P. Diddy has herpes and that's likes to give it in the butt. Again, that's what I'm, Super I, had said. Like Super you know had I mean? said that in our book, right, Usher. Do you, boo-boo? Do you, boo-boo? But I think the the issue with Diddy really has more to do with his use of power. Like, 
It's more about a mm-hmm. power play with it. So, like, I don't care who you're banging. And if the person on the receiving yeah, end of it, if that's the case. Exactly. Like, do you? I'm serious as fuck. I can care less just because you ain't uh, fucking me. But but at just the same take time, it. just because you like to say take that, take that, don't mean you need to be taking it from motherfuckers. But, I mean, but that doesn't mean, but, it, but and, and also, I don't really feel bad for those that are choosing it. Let's just use like the hypotheticals that we have out there. We'll use Justin Bieber and Meek Mill, right? Meek is like choosing it. He could have walked away mm-hmm. a long time ago. Justin is a child, was a child. You understand? It's not what the same thing, right? So if the ones that choose it, you know what I mean? Hey, that's on you. If that's what you like. If that's, yeah, if that's what you like. Exactly. I mean, but Juju, a... Juju yeah. Smith Schuster put on a skirt on purpose because he wanted to. He made that choice. I know there's a picture of LeBron circulating in a skirt. I don't know if that was altered or if LeBron actually actually put on a skirt. But hey, yeah. if that's well, how you I like mean, a party. By it's all been meets. pretty loud. See, LeBron is very smart about what gets exposed, but it's been made not very now. clear. Not He's, a, part yeah. He's part of that club. He's part of that club. Not now. Talking about ain't nothing like a Diddy party? Um, I mean, don't talk about my glorious king that way. What did he just say? Ugh. I mean, uh, yeah, like, look, he, he, Matt, real talk, real he's talk. He's the king of getting his butthole. Go, you know, go, go back and right watch. Go, allegedly. Go, go down allegedly. the rabbit allegedly. hole. Allegedly. allegedly. Go down the rabbit hole with him during those first few years. During the first few years before he had power. During those first few years and watch videos of him with those guys. Oh, Diddy. And let's make no mistake. If P. Diddy goes to jail, if he ends up in a cell, he is going to end up just like Epstein. Oh, yeah, it's, sorry. it's written in stone. They're using him as a fall guy right now. It's the only reason he's alive. Well, 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 Jay-Z's he's a, hoping he dies before yes. the shit spills out on Jay-Z. Him um, and Hove, him and Hove killed Biggie and Pac. It's it's pretty much clear as fuck now that they they had everything to do with that. And it was to keep them from Yeah, yeah I agree. And and Marcus, they, they, they had one, the most to gain from their deaths. So. Marcus, how long have I been telling you that? No, forever. Who's I never that? doubted it though, because I'm thinking like, who had the most to gain from those two's death? You know, like Diddy skyrocketed after that. Okay, mm-hmm. Marcus, you're absolutely fucking correct, but that is like the first layer peel of the onion. The mm-hmm. next layer to it is what you have to understand that happened in just a couple of days leading up to first Park's death and then Biggie's death. Park and Biggie oh. were about to go away and start this whole thing where they were going to recruit these young rappers and they were going to start basically like a fucking union. Think of it like that. Okay. They were about to union out from the record companies. They Man. were assassinated Here. 48 hours after Pac said it. Let me break to... it down to you like this. The Jews and, run the industry, okay? And they the had Jews the influence, the too. I don't, I don't like, care how that sounds. Back, like yeah, to make it back off of that, they had the influence to make okay. their own thing. Yeah, I don't mm-hmm. care how that sounds to anybody. The Jews run the industry. Okay, I put it. I Do put a video in our Jews chat earlier about this. Want to take away? Because this is another topic we're going to cover when we actually do some music. When it comes to how hip hop hasn't benefited the black community in no way, shape, or form. And this reason, no, only heard it because the music, the music being done, produced, written, made by blacks doesn't belong to blacks. Let's look at who runs the world. I mean, they say it every day, but the Jews don't like to, you know, claim it. But it belongs to them. They're the ones making the money. And even when they say that certain artists are the masters? The sport, the sports industry. How many black owners do you know, bro? Or brothers? There's more now. And all all the the major sports? They're all part of that. If and if there is, because if and if there is a black owner. There are rules that come with being an owner, just like there are rules to being a black billionaire and a black millionaire. Correct. And that number one rule is you do not help your people in any fucking way, shape, or form. If you want to be rich, you let your people know that, hey, this can be you, but it will never be. I'd like for somebody to tell me it ain't so. 
Oh, no, you're absolutely right. Because as correct. many black motherfucking billionaires and millionaires that there are, you mean to tell me the black community can't be in a better situation? No, that's but, fair. You know, we won't, we're going to dive into that another time. But, Justin, I'm probably your new number one fan. And I'm sorry this shit fucking happened to you, bro, along with the rest of those kids. He's not the only one, bro. And and like you're talking yeah. about with the whole black community thing, there's a lot of black artists that aren't getting the attention about it that Justin's getting right now. So you could almost yeah, it could almost be said that yeah. the white boy's getting the one that's getting the sympathy and all of that. But there is you know how many black artists that Diddy has put through this same shit? Uh, well, bro. Well, B2K? B- okay. I'm pretty sure uh, what was that other all group? the motherfuckers that making 12. in the band that he had, like that whole making mm-hmm. in the band shit that he did, and 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 to touch on your point before you move on, real quick, um, you're absolutely correct because uh, besides them not owning uh, any of them owning the masters as far as artists go when it comes to the record companies, the 50s and 60s, 70s black music, if you want to categorize it like that, was basically like the beginning is the R&B and soul and Motown, and that's the shit that made you want to fuck. And have a good time and fucking party shit. I know Matt. That's why he's laughing because he knows. Like, like he yeah, was well, made to that shit. So that you were born, populated, that populated our lower class uh, 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 populations, and they don't want that shit no more. So they turned it into uh, the prison, the private prison system. They wanted hip hop. You know, like they said, like there are certain artists that come out, like Noriega, and there's there's others. I won't say too many other names that have basically said hey look like you can either go straight left or right the left uh-huh. that's that like gay those, shit you know again you know we won't dive into the right is the devil the, shit the, uh-huh. those who run the music industry on prisons yes and what a prison that's, what that's all with. about yes it, it promotes they they literally had meetings and there's guys who were in there that in this meeting that didn't they didn't understand why they were even there and they said we're going to change the face of hip-hop music this is late in the 90s these are rappers from back in that time period like i said noriega has open interviews all about it i don't know how this motherfucker's alive but he basically talks about it like you ha- they give you the choice you sign a non-disclosure then they tell you a little bit more and then some of these guys were like wait we're not down with this and they kicked them out and shit right mm-hmm. and long story short they were saying we're going to change the face of hip-hop music to promote our private prison systems we want to glorify the type of behavior that makes motherfuckers go to jail so they can get paid yep and now let's 100%. move on to some lighter stuff well, well, yeah. now this uh these videos have been running through tiktok you know i kind of enjoy watching them because you know i like any kind of music and this is some type of music so you guys i don't wanna do this fella right here if you burn my keep it on the low If you creep, please don't let it show. Oh, baby, I don't wanna know. If you burn my keep it on the low. Don't use my heart, stick it in it more. If you creep, please don't let it show. How's it? How's it right there, baby? Which version is you guys like better, number one or number two? I like to mix them together. Butcher. Probably the first uh, one, honestly. I'll be fair. I'd probably say neither, but, you know, it's just me. <laughs> it's just my, my prerogative. But... You said which one it's is not better, bad. not when... do you like it. Oh, no, no, which one is better? I was like, well, the same. I mean, I, nothing, <laughs> neither is better or worse. <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, certain, it's cool. That's a cool thing that, like, his so voice is able to do. No, no, it's a cool thing that his voice can do that. But I'm like, like when I, I buy his fucking bad. record, hell no. no but never. like the skill, you know, talent I, behind it, it's he very, made all the very talent, man. Like, very talented. Hey, Matt, you like the first one, right? Uh, yeah. All right, roll it's almost tape, like baby. um, it's almost like pen and tonics. Like they do that kind of thing. Well, like they like do the acoustic thing. People do um. They're like good the tunes. Uh, yeah. Now let's let's hear the Asian fella. Go ahead and uh, finish that up, babe. Oh, I'm a man, 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 I'm a man,
Okay, those two were better to me. <laughs> those two were better. Oh, so you like an Asian brother over a white guy, huh? Those are hard well, to tell it more talented than that. Legit. Those two were crazy. Those two just now were crazy. I think I like the last guy more, but well, that no, third one was dope too. The first, the f- it, it's the, the same, guy the same guy doing two yeah. different versions. No, I'm saying with the last two guys. Is yeah, that the, the same the last, guy? It's just one year. It's the same guy doing two different oh, versions. So the, the, first, yeah. the, the last version, yeah, I might be. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the last version, I think I like the best. But the third one was like close, though. Like, that was sick. The first two, I'm cool. No so you, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't like, you didn't like, you didn't, well, oh, man, all right. Don't make uh, it a race I, thing. That's not, that's, not, that's not make it a race thing, man. Like, I don't, oh, I would, uh, ne- I would never do so. I, 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 don't need, I don't need the fans to be like, oh, man, Marcus is a racist. They didn't even know that about this. <laughs> <laughs> that's look, crazy. Look. <laughs> it's crazy. Fans, I got to look at him different now. <laughs> our, our five fans already know you hate Asians. Okay. Yeah. See? It's stuff like that, bro. It's stuff like that. That's gonna make it. Pe- people are gonna keep thinking it. You know, you get, you said that multiple times. So <laughs> that's what's so crazy. <laughs> like, well, look, like, you support, that you supporting this brother right here might change everybody else's mind. <laughs> so you might be <laughs> all right. I got enough, man. How'd you like I'm to your way, brother, your way in? Uh, it, it's pretty <laughs> solid. I it blows my mind that people are able to do that. Yeah, Who that's sick. Though. That's super sick. That's crazy. I'm I, so. What about you, Rick? I, I, all I was going to say was, is like, is that something that I'm going to like bump in the car? Probably not or anything like that. But if that is all legit on all four of those takes, if that's legit, then making those sounds, that's a skill that is just beyond comprehensible. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. to be able to There's make actually, all of those sounds, I had... like I can make it in my head, but I can't make it come out of my mouth. Like, yeah, yeah. You, you, you and me both, because I was about to get up on the mic and try it. So you want to learn how to beatbox. It's easy. It's easy. Okay, let's go. Just say booty. Booty. Okay. Watch. One, two, three, four. Booty, booty. <laughs> booty, booty. <clears throat> booty, booty. <laughs> booty, booty. <laughs> booty, booty. <laughs> booty, booty. I could do it with the keys a little bit. <laughs> I, listen, I literally just find out that there's like a... A beatbox league where they, yeah. you know, these motherfuckers compete. Yes. Oh, wow. So these dudes, like, dang it, that shit's sick. I mean, I'll, I'll, Ooh. I'll bring more Amen. to you guys' attention because it. Mm-hmm. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, dope please, though. Micah, That's make like sure dope. you make sure you grab that, Micah. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, a dope uh, skill to have, man. Oh, I mean, that's really right. dope. Yeah. And, and you know, those guys can sing too while they're doing this shit too. There's actually well, uh, yeah, another professional beatboxer mm-hmm, who reacts to these guys. He's pretty good too. He's he's funny as well. I might bring attention to him. Now we're gonna move. Bring on Michael Winslow to, into uh, it. like like start up uh, uh, an American uh, Idol thing with Michael Winslow as the judge. No, uh, that dude's nasty. He's he's been on the Monsters in the Morning several times. Oh gee, oh gee. So this uh these next topics this next topic I should say the next topic I should say is uh right around you guys' wheelhouse because ladies basketball is on the map like uh, must oh, map now open I can't I can't remember the last time that I watched a full basketball game because I haven't even watched a basketball an NBA game this year uh, I can't the last time I watched any college ball. Was when Marcus Canby and those guys were in college. Oh, oh good man. time. So that should give you an idea. Of what was the fi- last time I watched fifty years ago. <laughs> wow! From- How dare you, you call sir? Us How fucking old, old bro. How hey. dare you? Nah, that's at least that's at least thirty years, twenty five, thirty years though. Canby, what what college did he go to? Was up north. I, I can't mean, even retired. You mad? He went to you mad. Yeah. Uh, what was the other guy? It was a. Uh, uh, he got like, drafted in like '97 or some shit. So. Mm-hmm. Who else were you watching? Mm-hmm. Pete Maravich. I don't know how you're stopping. <laughs> he is too much. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm running out of things to say about Maravich.
<laughs> and for those of you wondering, yes, I am a vampire. I am a vampire. <laughs> Six hundred ladies years old, ball ladies ball is look yeah i'm on tiktok a lot especially when i'm on the toilet speaking of all the toilet i am a earthquake survivor earthquake! Earthquake! congratulations for those of you who were concerned that shit was <laughs> i don't want to joke about it because new york's making t-shirts about it already that were earthquakes already are... it's ridiculous it was just a little shake it, it was still unnerving. Violent, yeah, 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 yeah. It's still like scary. When the shuttle goes up here, you, you mean, right. like that, yeah, yeah. Facts. But uh, on TikTok, I'm on TikTok all the time, and I see clips of uh, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. Uh -huh. When oh. I see clips of Caitlin Clark, they paint her as, for the lack of a better way for me to put it, the White Angel. Uh -huh. She's the what? when you see white clips of. White of when you see Angel Reese, she's fighting for a rebound or fighting somebody on the court. Dirty debutantes, bro. The LSU Lady Tigers, dirty debutantes. That's what they said. And I like that. The too. media likes to dump on Angel Reese like blue, a blue. motherfucker. So they call her the self proclaimed self proclaimed villain. What do you expect a girl to do when all you do is talk shit about her? I haven't. Heard all it. you did was talk shit about her. Like all they do is talk shit about this girl. All they and what's sad is that half of those comments are coming from black folk uh, and black commentators. Mm -hmm. Crabs in a barrel, bro. That's the black community. Crabs in a barrel will pull each other down instead of lifting each other up. Mm -hmm. These girls can ball now. Uh, Angel Reese isn't the only baller. Uh, what's uh, Johnson? The young lady that can rap, yeah. That's what I was saying. That girl She's can nice. who? Mm -hmm. I mean, all the girls from South Carolina. I mean, oh, they what? For solid. the last like five years too, right? those yeah. girls have been solid. Uh -huh. now, I can't say I've know. never seen. Yeah, I've never seen any of those girls ball. I just see. I I've just seen clips of these young ladies because they Caitlin they don't Clark. they don't want you to see it. It's it's yeah. a. It's a predominantly black school with a predominantly black team winning, going undefeated. Of course, the media is not going to show you that. Uh -oh. Um, the, oh, the whole Caitlin Clark thing, you know, you know, obviously it's been pretty public at this point now that Ice Cube, because he had he also confirmed it that Ice Cube and Big Three offered her of five million bucks, which that's more money than you'll ever make in the WNBA. But now I'm hearing circulating talk now. She's about to get an offer to come to the NBA. She's she's about to get an offer from. No, no, fuck, <laughs> she is not. I promise you, she is. She's about I to get an offer. I promise you, she ain't. You must have had a dream about it, cause ain't no fucking nope. way. No, no, no. I'll I'll pull it up to confirm it, and we can discuss it after the fact. But I, I, don't be surprised. Don't be shocked. Don't uh, be shocked if you start seeing NBA teams shopping her. It's not gonna happen. Why the fuck not? Uh, I'm gonna co-sign Matt. I'm gonna co-sign Matt on this one. Like, I feel like no, I feel like there probably is gonna be some of that, but and it's not sexist at all to say. I feel like the 15th player on the bench on any team will give her work. I just feel like her? that's well, this is a physical possible, thing. And... But you could say that you could say that about several people in the NBA that she'd give them work. No. Especially now in oh, a yeah, non-physical, like how the league is going, like non-physical, you're going to start seeing women in NBA and NFL because it's getting to the point no. now where why the fuck not? Because they're not going to get hit anyway. So what's the difference? But I feel like skill, that, right? that somebody somebody was going to hit them. Somebody's going to sacrifice. No, but I'm saying I, I, just think that would be, I think that would be an indictment on the WNBA, though. Like she should be going to the WNBA to improve that land. Like they don't her, her being in the NBA would be a spectacle. Not that I don't she's gonna make money. That, nobody's going to take that serious. You know, I agree she's going to make money on many levels. I agree with you on many levels, but let me be the devil's Look, advocate. Why? I'll tell, tell you why. exactly why. Because what is the, there's a whole en entire reason for there being a WNBA and an NBA. Uh, Let uh -huh. the women play the women the and the women men can play be the men. There's go be competitive in your league. There's a yeah. reason why you're playing with other women. That's going to put eyeballs on that league. Just on her the WNBA. presence. You know? Take Steph as an example. Like, listen, I'm not talking shit at all, and Steph is probably my favorite player in the league right now. Well, not this minute, but in the league, right? You easily replace a Cheryl Swoops 
in her prime or any of these other like maybe six to eight different women over the last 20 years of the WNBA or so uh, check me on that if y'all need to but in 20 years there's been five girls that could be just as impactful on any NBA team as some of the other five last guys at best on the team maybe not maybe not oh. start fucking teams over the years though come on bro like take the charlotte they're Hornets. shitty because <laughs> of the good teams yeah. in the nba it's not because right. these dudes are oh, not wait. good yeah. Yeah. not because like, these dudes are not good you take if like you have a, a team of steph Wolf curry team. kevin durant clay thompson draymond green i don't give a fuck who you and are Cheryl you're not being that team and it shows she's and gonna Cheryl get her Swoops. ass beat She's going to get her ass beat. No, bro. She's going to go out there and ball the fuck out as long as the guys aren't holding her. I co-signed. I that, that, yeah, they, they that, that, that's, ass whooped. Now she's that's playing Draymond now. Out of here, and then all of a sudden, Gobert comes in, and Draymond's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, it, it's chill out, chill out, yeah, chill out, chill out. And then Draymond, he, he headlocked Gobert there, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank hey, you. bets are off. I would be okay you know, with he's, seeing, fe- I guess my point is, I would be okay with seeing females in the NBA. Hey, look, Caitlin Clark is just as tall and just as big as Jordan Poole. But you saw what Draymond exactly. did to him. No, I don't okay. think she is, though. I think she's six foot. She's six foot. That's, that's small for Alan that. Alan Iverson. <laughs> fucking Kyrie. Yeah, but those Kyrie's are Western like, McCollins. Fucking six foot tall, they, two, not even 200 pounds. But think about it. The Anybody fact, that's six uh-huh. foot and under in the NBA, like, they were exceptional. She, she couldn't body as a She couldn't body Patrick as Beverly's a center. Beverly's going to be her she could have played the four fact or five, you're complaining, Kaylin. You're comparing Kaylin Clark to Allen Iverson throws this whole thing out of the window. No, Come on, just by size. Yeah. Come, Come on, on now. Now. Don't go there. Come on now. Size wise, like she can't go in there and body like those guys. Like the Allen, Steph, the Muggsy. Those guys got bodied in, inside, bro. They got beat the fuck up. So yes, they're they are up the you know driving. Those up dudes the lane. were extremely muscular at their height, though. Well, yeah. So is Caitlin. Well, she's not muscular, but she's strong. I think she can go in the NBA and hit open shots. If that's what, like, the question my is. My point. But I'm like, who's going to give her those open shots? Though? That's my thing. And is she going to be able to create them JJ on Reddy. her own? And that's nothing James against Harden. her. I'm not trying to disrespect her in any way. Okay. Well, Brody, uh, adult, oh my! <laughs> Here we fucking go. James Harden and Caitlin Clark in the same conversation. <laughs> it, oh my god. Matt's going to fight you, baby. Man's going to fight you at the next barbecue. Larry, what the hell are you doing? Oh, Larry! Larry, you can't just... Oh, Larry! Oh, are you all right? How did... Larry! Hey, hey, you know how to get to the I house, do, baby. I do want to <laughs> add one thing since we're discussing uh, women's college basketball. I have a video basketball. that I do want to play as well. UConn got cheated last night or the night before, whenever they played. You can tell they're going to run some kind of action. Here comes Beckers off the screen. Another look here. Left elbow? I guess. All right, well, I understand there's an initiative to get, you know, Caitlin Clark to the national championship and help her win. I get all that. But mm-hmm. UConn should not have lost that. Not on that call. Not that way. Not with the way you that is. just think the rest of like, the game and awards. I was like, because a lot of people are trying to talk shit, and I'm like, well, those calls at the end kind of let UConn's win. So well, I no, that, you guys, no, that last one was like, if that was a foul, then I'm like, or if that was an illegal screen, then I feel like there should not be screens should at have been all. Thirty more. No, I mean, it's like the thing. I'm a Paige Becker's fan too. I think she's better. I was about to say Paige. Paige. I think Paige is better than Caitlin Clark. To challenge Jackson is an elite shot blocker. Becker's is just a just a genius at creating space for herself. That's just hey, that's a hot take. All I day. guess I don't know. I take All Paige Beckers over Caitlin Clark any day. She can ball twice on Sundays. I'll, I'll, I'll look her up. I'll look her up. I'll, I'll definitely yeah. look her up. Let me Paige Beckers is like that, bro. She's like oh, that. Oh, she balls. <laughs> oh, she balls, bro. Mm-hmm. Box of Paige. What school, I don't know if you guys heard this as well, but there was a school that went to Idaho, a girls' college, and they were Boom. met with racial slurs. Boom. Probably oh, all of them. Like recently? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's happened recently. No, I haven't heard about it recently. It sounds like it could be South Carolina, bro. Or probably um, LSU. I know it happened. Okay, but I know it happened in Idaho. 
Well, and I did I did notice one thing. I don't want to really, you know, point. But the Iowa team is all white with one light-skinned black girl. White power. But LSU, the LSU squad is all black. KJ uh-huh. power. With one white girl. No, people of color. Because they she's leaving now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People, people, people of the, color. People of like, like, color. Like, Poa. Uh, no, Poa. 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 Poa is, uh, I think she's Australian, actually. But she probably but got black in her anyway. She's probably got no, a she's kid, definitely, you know. yeah. And so probably some Asian in there as Everyone well. does nowadays. I, I was like, I was like, if she don't, does she want some? <laughs> and, and listen, man, I don't understand LSU's game plan going into that. Like, once, for one, Caitlin Clark was shooting open jump shots. I they thought were that was crazy. Huh? They were and then scared. when Haley was guarding her, it's like, bro, okay, she can't do this. Trap um, her. I'm going to make the rest of the team beat me. If Caitlin Clark has fucking 25 assists and they just go crazy, bet. Hey, My I question is, that. was that done on purpose? The script was written. Oh, yeah, it's definitely an agenda, I think, there. But with that being said, LSU should have been better this season considering they're the defending champs. They were the preseason number one. They added a five-star recruit. But then they lose, like, five seniors? Yeah, they they definitely lost more games this year. And, like, the way that Haley Van Lil looked in that game, like, that's going to make people think she can't hoop. But it's like, bro, she got flustered. It was clear. You can see it in her face. Like she looked, she looked like she was outmatched. And then like we were talking about, she was going down the court taking ill advised shots. Especially uh, with like two minutes left. They were down by like seven or eight. And she's just running down the court just doing shit. And it's yeah, like, bro, that was my thing. you're Why? already playing yeah. bad defense. Exactly. Why are you, you going can... the other way and making terrible decisions? You can't you get it all, all back. Yeah, you have like, all that one talent possession. on your squad. Mm-hmm. And you and you what, you trying to be Jordan? But that was my really? thing. It's like I, I think Kim Mulkey is a fucking excellent coach, but it's like I'll give it like, okay, if you see a Steph Curry, like he gets hot early. What are you gonna do? You're gonna make it harder for him, right? You're gonna trap him, you're gonna like, you know, make him a fucking playmaker as opposed right. to I'm not gonna let you drop forty. Uh-huh. And just wreck this game late. And like I said, if you get 25 assists because your teammates are getting busy, word, I can live with that. But uh-huh. I'm not going to let you go and do the thing that you do best and, like, not – like, there was literally no resistance, bro. None. None. And she's shooting, None. like – she's shooting damn near NBA threes, and it's like, all right, y'all need to push up on it because you know once she hits half court, this is some Steph Curry type shit. You need to start guarding him as he's, like, crossing the half court line. And, dude, Angel can Reese- happen. Angel Reese on a bad ankle uh-huh. played an awesome game. Yeah. Played yeah. an awesome game. That last foul he called on her was bullshit. Uh, uh-huh. Before we go on, uh, go ahead, babe. Roll tape on Angel Reese for me. DeMarcus Cousins is still body that bitch. What? <laughs> Big facts. I can't stop that. Boogie. <laughs> Bro, let me tell you something. Oh, I love this girl too, man. I love Everybody this girl. can have their opinion mm-hmm. on Angel Reese, uh, but y'all don't know her. Like, y'all don't know Angel Reese. I know Angel Reese. I know the real Angel Reese. And the person I see every day is a strong person. Is a caring, loving person, bro. The crown she wears is heavy, bro. She's the type of teammate that's gonna make you believe in yourself. The the leap that I took from my freshman to sophomore year, Angel gave me that confidence to go be a dog. Playing next to a dog every day. And you know, just to see how the media ridicule her. Went through our problems, but like this is my sister right here, and I'm so proud of her. Like the media, y'all, mm-hmm. how they like to twist and call her the villain and all of that. Y'all don't know Angel, bro, and I'm just happy that I get to play with her. I get to be around her presence. Her energy is different. Like she, yep. she just make me a better player. She yeah, make yeah, me a better player, go. and that's what great players do. I'll say something too. Um, I think you know. Angel's one of the toughest people I've been around. Um, People speak hate into her life. I've never seen people wish bad things on someone as much as her. And and it does not affect her. She comes to practice every day. She lives her life every day. She she lives how she wants to live. And she don't let nobody change that. And, you know, that's that's the key to life right there. 
Y'all do not get to her. Oh, uh, let me say it again. Yeah, Y'all do not good. get to Angel Reese. So you might want to give it up. Throw the towel away because you're See, wasting your man. energy. So Even after she plays Angel's one of the toughest people I've been around. Man. So, now, so that, that has to say a lot to Angel Reese. And to oh, see some of these commentators, especially, you know, some of the brothers. Damn, man, this is a college girl. Exactly, man. These are kids, man. It's crazy. And there's so really? much we don't see, yo. There's so much we don't Not see. Granted, you know, like, I, you know, I've heard that, you know, she's she's posted, like, um, sexualized pictures, whatever. You know, if the girl's at the beach, what else, what else is she supposed to wear? She could be fans. fucking grown. But isn't you know that the whole thing? thing that they wanted more femininity in the WNBA and women's sports? So, like, so you know, shouldn't they be more feminine? Um, exactly. So why are you I'm fucking with this? She should she be wearing boxes and a tank top? You know? like, what the fuck, man? And you painted her a villain. So why should she, why shouldn't she claim to be a villain? If that's what you painted her as. But I'm like, she's what? Who is she the villain to? Like Caitlyn Clark? Exactly. That's weird to me. Like, what the fuck is so heroic friends. about? They're friends. No, they are. But like, what's so yeah, heroic that's... about Kaylee Clark that she can shoot it's a work, three ball? Bro. It's yeah. work. Ooh, I think it's. I mean, it's obviously based in some race thing because the comparison to Bird and Magic in the seventies and what they're doing for the world. I'm like, all right, that's cool, but it don't have to be that. They're making it that. It don't have to be. Yeah, it's just yeah. Well, it's women. But they, but they got to keep you interested in the sport. That's the point. No, you know, that's that's the whole sports entertainment element to it all. Like that's mm-hmm. if, if, that's if fair. There, that's yeah, a fair point. Listen to how and listen to how much we've heard bitching about how there's not enough money in the WNBA over the last like two three years, and things like this, they're going to grab a hold mm-hmm. of it and run with it. Like it's just like yeah. any other business. Like hey, this is a just like just like Taylor Swift at the fucking NFL. You know what I mean? Like it's mm-hmm. a way to bring in another audience, and if 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 it doubles triples attendance for WNBA fucking a let's go but yes no, right. don't, don't, don't don't push the narrative you know what i mean without pushing no, no, without no. considering it all but it, you know but you got to have that baby face heel scenario so if yeah. you know angel steps up she'll be another one that is popular forever now because of this no that's facts that's a good point that's a very good point and from what i've heard both girls are going to the WNBA they're going to get Love paid him. they're going to do just fine they yeah, they're gonna, gonna do good. They're out. gonna, oh, yeah. they're gonna change that script, and that's exactly the point. Like making making it a bit of a production, getting the fans involved, maybe like pushing a, a game a certain way to keep certain people in in the in the tournaments and the and the playoffs and stuff like that. It's going to happen if you're trying to build a brand. You gotta expect it, and I think that's what's happening here. Like that's what we're mm-hmm. seeing as a well, push for this. That. <laughs> I, I want to say though like another thing that helped the WNBA I know like they're still young as a league at some point expansion needs to be a thing like they need more parity just like the NBA has 30 they need to have 30 they like, have them in the same city you know like the partners exactly them being in the same city they should they should do more of a co cohesiveness with the NBA team mm-hmm. I think that yeah. would end up making it more successful. I'm not telling anybody how to run their business, but I think like like you know instead of having different names, they should have the same names. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, almost like how JV and varsity works in school mm-hmm. or in college. You have a men's yeah. league and a, a, a men's team and a women's team for mm-hmm. all of those places. You know, or at least the you ones also, that are because yeah. uh, like the LSU girls are the Lady Tigers, but the LSU men are the Tigers. So like yeah. right. that would be dope for them to have the same name as just the feminine right. version of it. Like that'd be fucking yeah, dope. Do, just it. like it is in high school and college. That's how it is in high school and college. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they do play like on the same days. Sometimes they don't. But at the same time, like they they're the same team, same mascots, same yep. fucking cheerleaders, yep. same fucking uniforms, et cetera, et cetera. Hell yeah, no way. It, it would probably do the WNBA a lot of good to do that. Right. Rick, you might have just fixed the WNBA, bro. That's why you <laughs> might have just fixed the WNBA. <laughs> no, so it'll we got happen, about... and I'll have nothing to do with it. <laughs> oh, of course. That's how they do it, man. Yeah, nice. We got about four, maybe five minutes to discuss UFC 300. I okay. have not been paying attention to the last few events. I've been super busy. Not my uh, 
Shout out to Sabre. Wrestling's better right good. now anyway, Al. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Al. I'm, sorry, I'm sorry we didn't get to talk Shame about that. Else. But yeah, we uh, we didn't get to talk about WrestleMania. But WrestleMania hey, we can, was good. We can we, recap it on our next yeah, one. Yeah, we can, re- we can re- recap it in the next one. But oh, uh, UFC 300. Mm-hmm. The main card. Who do we have, Matt? First fight. Uh, the main event is Alex Pereira and Jamal Hill. Oh. Yeah. Yes, yes. Now, we all know Jamal Hill relinquished the belt uh-huh. because of injury. Uh-huh. Yeah, he never hurt, lost right? his belt. You're going to have to try me. Fuck that. I ain't giving shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Pereira, that, that, that's not to say that Pereira didn't earn the belt, you know? Jamal Jamal didn't hold the belt. That Jamal didn't hold the belt up. He didn't want an interim belt. So, you know, of course, he relinquished it. So, this fight here. Let's uh, call these Champ fights. Let's call Champ. these fights. Yeah, let's call this fight real quick. So, who do you, who do you guys got at the main event? I think Jamal Hill's going to win Starting with you, that. Matt. I think Jamal Hill's going to win that one. As, uh, much as, I, as much as I'm a fan of Alex, Jamal Hill is a killer. Facts. Yes. Yes. So, Marcus, I'm assuming you're agreeing with... No, I'm going to say I think Alex is going to knock Jamal out. Second oh, round. Possibly third. Oh, so not only do you dislike Asians, but you no. dislike your own brothers. <laughs> you're hating on the blacks. Whoa, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> well, you know what? At, at, least, hey. at, least you're, at least you're spreading the hate. You just don't keep Hey, no Stephen A. Smith be, man. Like, I'm not against my people. Bro. Eagle saying. <laughs> fucking Eagle I'm just saying. trying to be objective. <laughs> I'm just trying to be objective, you know? <laughs> oh, that's oh, fucking man. great. That's fucking great. What about you, Rick? What do you got on this one? Um, so the AP... AP, I think, is underestimating the fight a little bit. He doesn't realize yep. how much Hill is hungry, and yep. I think, I, I think it's probably going to go to a decision. Possibly Hill making him tap out late, mm-hmm. um, okay. because you know Hill, Hill likes to Hill Hill likes to get you kind of hemmed up. So if he's the same fighter that he was two years ago, I think that's probably the route that it's going to go, and I think AP is going to underestimate him. So I'm giving it to Hill by decision, probably. Right on, right on. Well, I got Hill. I believe Hill's going to knock him out. And I'll say this. Oh. If you've been keeping up with the news, Hill put hands on his own brother. I think he sent his own Saw brother to the hospital. His oh, own wow. brother. And he's... But he's uh, uh, did he took his old lady or something like that? Isn't that what the, under the, the underlying C was? Or something like he was trying to... I'm fuck unsure. With his oh, well, well, your own brother. It was brother, like some LL Cool J and In Too Deep shit. Like, he was like that. Oh, uh, no, I could be that, wrong, but I'm see... pretty sure that was the story. Wait, wait. I see Jamal. I see Jamal knocking him out. I see Jamal knocking him out. I see that happening. I see that happening. This is set. Yeah, we'll recap uh, WrestleMania in the next episode, folks. For those of you who like wrestling, I think the WWE brand is 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 going down a good path. You guys, like for real, like it needs to be considered as well just right there with the rest of the professional sports leagues that we pay attention to because they're on the <laughs> same look- level. Uh, now, look, this episode is being filmed. Oh, I'm sorry, recorded before the Sunday night. eclipse. So hopefully, we survive the eclipse. Because some claims are being made, you know, I'm unsure. So you know, if we make it back, we'll discuss a little WrestleMania for you folks, along with some other things. And you know, if Marcus is feeling well, we might have a surprise for you folks as well. I'm not going to say what, but we might yeah. have a surprise for you. If Marcus is feeling well, unless it's you two okay. throwing hands in a boxing ring, I don't want to see it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, folks, uh, we appreciate you guys joining us. If you guys are looking for any artwork, please feel free to hit my nephew Nathaniel up. His info is in our bio. Mm-hmm. If you're also looking for any timeshares. Sean's information is in our bio as well, so please hit him up. He'll take care yes. of you. Yes, sir. And if you like our intro and outro track, it's called Trap Sex by the artist named Nish. You can find his music on YouTube and SoundCloud. And his info is in our our link as well. Yes, yes, we yes. Also got so merch, like, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, check out our merch, like, subscribe, uh, comment, well. interact. We definitely appreciate it. All right. So uh, that's all the time we have. Signing off. I'm Al. Joined by my brother Marcus, Rick, and Matt. Same peace. Later. <laughs>